Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I watched a little bit of Johnny Carson last night, and uh, when he does his opening monologue, he's always looking over here at Doc Severinsen, and he has his hands all over his face. So I decided it didn't really matter what I look like or what I, what I said, but uh, or we could, I could be uh, Jimmy Fallon and go, welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have a really great show today. We have uh, a special guest for a little bit, and then Aaron and Alex are going to take it away, introducing a brand new pattern. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to introduce to you my longtime and very good friend, Nancy Schreiber. Uh, she is going to be a new special guest at our pattern testing in Cleveland, which is in April. We still have a couple of three spots there. We'd love to have you join us. And hopefully after you hear all of the fantastic things that Nancy's going to say and what she's going to show you, you know you won't be able to miss it. So hello, Nancy. Hi there. You are talking to us from Charlottesville, Virginia, correct? Correct. Yes. In your new sewing room, which I haven't seen. Oh. No. <laughs> you need to come visit. I know. I know. I have the open invitation and I'm going to take advantage of it. Good. You and I go back a long way. Yeah. Do yeah. you remember how we met? I do. It was right after you bought the school in San Francisco and um, I flew out to take a week long class with you uh, as an introduction to the sewing workshop patterns, which were new to me and I couldn't wait to get in and discover what all these angles and rectangles were all about. So exactly. I yeah. remember I remember the moment uh, you were with three other gals. I was from St. Louis and at the time you were from St. Louis. No, or I was in DC, but I knew them from St. Louis. So okay. um, so we had this Midwestern kind of vibe going and we went out to dinner and we just got to be good friends and then ultimately you became a teacher an instructor at the sewing workshop but you you'd had a background even before that uh and you're it was i think through the sewing workshop that the tagline contemporary sashiko was sort of put out there is that right do i remember that oh, right i remember it well and you put it out there and i thought this is too cool to let go. And I jumped on it and claimed it as my name. <laughs> yeah, you, you owe me for that. I'm not sure how much. <laughs> oh, yeah, get in line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, get in line. But, uh, but you'd been hand sewing and embellishing garments for a, and quilts for a long time. Very so long time. kind of tell us, you know, even what, how you started in this business and and your your love of working with your hands so give us a little something about who you're all about well i'm going to go all the way back because i'm really kind of like the old dog out there yeah um <laughs> but um at some point in the 80s i got picked up by a quilting magazine to write articles for them and they sent me around to big quilt shows to interview artists. And um, I think that's where it started. Um, the hand sewing thing was always something that I kept in the closet and didn't talk to anyone about. But I was really, it was really my passion. I needed to find some surface to put some hand stitching and used it sort of as a signature. It was my mark on the cloth. So with the quilting magazine, um, I, I took a class, I interviewed uh, an instructor for Bernina at the time, Alice Allen Cole, and she was teaching Sashiko on uh, very basic Bernina sewing machines and teaching it as bobbin work, which meant that you were working upside down. Um, and it was a real, math problem about where you went to stitch and where you were going to stop and then where you would pick up the pattern again. Um, and I ran into her again about a year later and she had perfected the bobbin work routine with the heavy thread and the bobbin and a heavy duty needle. Um, and it was really beautiful, but it wasn't for me because it was like a roadblock 
too, too much math, um, too many stops and starts, and I couldn't find the flow of the stitch. So fast forward a couple more years, and the Smithsonian ran a program, um, the Sm Smithsonian Magazine, they have an adult ed portion, and they brought in a Sashiko master from Japan, and I was lucky enough to take a class with them. And it was like the hook had been slowly going into the back of my neck, but boy, he just reeled the whole thing in. And it was time to bring this out of the dark and let people know that I really do love hand sewing. And from there on, I've always looked for a surface to put more hand stitches on. So um, it's, you know, it's kind of like what we do all the time. One thing leads to another and all of a sudden, some would look and say, wow, you're in over your head. Others would look and say, well, I really found, you know, my thing. So yeah. that's it. Well, you really have found your thing. And I see behind you, you've brought in some of these um, from the vault. Garments, from the vault. <laughs> <laughs> which is, of course, the theme for the year. So yes. show, show us a couple of things that you have. And so we kind okay. of get the drift of uh, uh, visually what you're all about. Um. So I brought in my very favorite garment of all time. This is a Nico jacket. I mean, we're going back a few years. Yep. And all of this fabric was taken out of the trash after a workshop that I taught in um, Texas. <clears throat> and the student it was a hand painting silk. And then we would design a garment and then you would do hand stitching. Um, these are really old vintage kimono scraps that some were in the trash, some I had, but I combined them all together to piece this for the bands and for the cuff. And this very delicate, very beat up, worn out silk, um, I painted it again. And I just thought it really, it, it spoke to me. It needed to come out and, and be, be new again. And so, um, I don't get this out very much, but because it's the year of the vault, I thought, why not bring out Absolutely. the Nico jacket? Pull that closer to the camera a little bit so we can see a little bit of the stitching that you've done. There you go. Yeah. It's stitched all over to create a totally new uh, motif and, and fabric. And we don't need to get into all the layering and all that that you do now because you're going to talk about that in Cleveland. But uh, right. yeah. So yeah, that's, that's gorgeous. And the Nico jacket should be on our list of something to bring back actually you know it, it's timeless the the lines and everything on that it goes with everything and yeah. um i really i mean you didn't have to bring it back for me but i think you should bring it back for everyone because it's great great yeah. design so what's the one right behind you uh this one yeah or this one either one either one okay. this is the um japanese top Yes, which so is our January this, project, yes. Yeah, but this is only using the right front, a right yeah. front for the right and one for the left. This garment, if you're into fabric manipulation or if you are if you want to do anything cool and creative and, and just what you want to do, this is the perfect template. Uh, it goes together perfectly. Um, you can just do anything. You could do felting. You could do, you know, stitching that I love. You could you could just do anything. You could be a collage, uh, you know, garment. But it it's just a wonderful, guaranteed result. You know, perfect garment to work with. Yeah, it is. Both of those garments are, as you say, good canvas. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and and then you had a plaza jacket as well somewhere. Um, I do. Which is uh, something we're going to surprise everyone with a little bit later. But okay. um, anyway, uh, you know, your work is stunning and and it, it's handcrafted, but it's sophisticated. And, you know, we've been doing these fractured jackets uh, classes, one in Santa Fe, which we just finished, one that we're doing in August here in Topeka. And I hope to see you in Topeka on that class. Uh, Hopefully you can <laughs> help teach that uh, with your version of fracture jackets as well. But uh, but for the moment, uh, we are asking you, we sent you a blouse uh, that was a prototype 
for the blouse that we're going to be testing in Cleveland. And while we're not asking you to do an all over stitched layered, whatever, I know that you are the right person to add just some touches of hand stitching. When we were in Santa Fe and you were with me, we went into some fine stores and one of the themes that kept kind of coming into us was all of these little, just, just touches of hand stitches, not all over the garment, not to create a new fabric, just maybe a pop of color, a little hand stitch. So there's that handcraft element that I think is coming into ready to wear. And you are the perfect person to do a little bit of embellishment on that garment that we sent you. And you're going to bring it to Cleveland. You're going to talk to people about how they can make their, um, whatever we're going to call it right now, it's called the Lakewood jacket, but that's part of the pattern testing. We may <laughs> rename it. Uh, after people have made their jackets or their uh, blouses, then you're going to help them think about some personal touches that they can add to it. So we're, we're looking forward to seeing you in Cleveland in April. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, it's a small, smallish group, you know, so there's a lot of hand holding, a lot of attention being paid to everyone. And everybody's gonna leave with what I consider to be a really stellar, high-end designer, personal top blouse. So Alex, do you wanna say anything more about uh, the event? Uh, do we wanna see or talk to Nancy anymore? What are, what are we up to here? Well, hi, Nancy. I pop hi, on. Hi, Alex in charge of all the screens. So uh, I'm big yeah. here right now, but thank you for joining us. We do have some questions from people and there are many people in the chat that have taken classes with you in the past that had a wonderful time. Oh, so that's good. yeah, um, what is the pattern that is the blue jacket? So can you kind of go over maybe your projects again? The blue jacket that this Japanese top yes. jacket this is um, the Japanese top. It's two right fronts. Um, it's hand painted silk. And it, at the Sashiko, there's a couple of different Sashiko designs that are stitched on here using silk embroidery floss. And then um, strip piece, um, vintage kimono fabrics together just to break up the surface a bit and add some um, interest. And what about the sleeveless top that is on the mannequin? Oh, this is my new, my new love, um, my new addiction, mindless stitching. This is my attempt at Boro Arcantha. This is the Tremont vest, the Tremont jacket as a vest. And this is um, pieces of uh, indigo dyed cotton cloth shibori style that have just been uh, laid on top of one another. And then the raw edges were turned under like needle turn whenever they came up on the surface. And then the whole thing is just mindless stitching, uh, like three rows of white thread and then three or four rows of blue and then switch back to white and just to fill in the whole surface with all of the stitching. I, I have a question. Um, what are you looking forward to about Cleveland? <laughs> well, you know, I love to meet people and and take them down my path. Hand stitching is the you know the thing to do. It's the thing that you want to bring into your practice, your daily practice. And so it's like mm, good, some more people you know to bring down my path. But um, I. You know, any chance to show people the benefit that comes back when you work with your hands is kind of my thing. And um, I love that whenever, you know, that moment comes when someone is in there to their stitching and all of a sudden they realize that, you know, this is soothing. This is more than a stitch. Um, that's what it's all about for me. So I'm excited. So if you want to join us in Cleveland, Nancy will be there. I uh, I was telling her when she got on the call that I was trying to find a headshot of her, but she's like a ninja on the internet. I couldn't do it. <laughs> um, so Nancy is our special guest for Cleveland, and that's coming up soon in April. So 
Uh, if any of you want to join, we are going to be in a beautiful venue just south of Cleveland. And it's three days of sewing with a fun cocktail soiree at my house on a Tuesday night. And we have great lunches. The food is really great from a local um, a local service near the venue. And um, yeah, three days of sewing. You make new friends and maybe learn a new technique through Nancy. So you can sign up on the website under our events page the pattern testing workshop in cleveland you can just pay the deposit today and let us know if you want to rent a machine and then you can pay the rest later but if you've been thinking about it or maybe had i know there are some of you from santa fe even that had to go home and check your schedules but and i know we have some from santa fe that are, are joining us but um nancy we want to thank you so much for coming and coming on this live stream. And Linda, do you have any more questions for her? No, I'm good. I, I, uh, I always love working with Nancy. She's, she's a dream girl. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank okay. you. All right. Well, um, we, today is a day to introduce a new pattern. So I'm going to introduce uh, Aaron and Alex, and they're going to take it from here. Um, I may come back on because I have on the garment that was the beginning of all of this new pattern, kind of the starting point. So they may bring me on. They may not. They may be sick of me. So we'll see. But Erin, um, come on down. So today is a day of a new pattern launch, everyone. So if you haven't seen the emails or already stocked the website. We have a new pattern launch. It is called the Day Jacket. It is a PDF pattern and we're really excited about the development of this pattern. Erin is in charge of all of our patterns and so she's going to show us the pattern, talk more about it, show us kind of the details and how this pattern was formed. It's um, it's it started with Kathy Davis's favorite pattern, the Now shirt. And it it uh, morphed into this wonderful jacket. So we have some amazing fabrics for you guys to look at, uh, to consider in making this day jacket. And those are on sale today, as well as the pattern. The pattern is actually also on sale today. So um, our new pattern is out, the day jacket. So let's bring on Erin and she will tell us a little bit more about the pattern. So here she is wearing it. And here it is next to her on the mannequin. So we have it in two different fabrics and then you have a whole wall of fabrics that we've picked out for everyone to sort of see different options of how you can make this jacket it's so versatile so i don't know aaron tell us maybe even like what your favorite part of planning this pattern was or part your favorite element and maybe a favorite part of even the design well hello everyone um yes we're here to introduce our new pattern the day jacket um, and the thing that I think is great about the day jacket, we're going to go into some details about the pattern and those are my favorite things. Um, I love a pattern that you can, um, you can either add or delete details, but the base garment is, 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 a, is a canvas like Nancy was talking about. It's a canvas that you can work with and you can add as many details as you want, or you can simplify it and, um, and make your just basic jacket. So um, those details that I love, I'm going to point those out here um, on this beautiful wool jacket here. And um, the, the jacket, the day jacket has some really great details. So one of the main things, it has a two inch stand up collar here and then some beautiful patch pockets on the front, one on each side. And the really unique thing about this jacket is that this pocket is a two opening pocket, which is just really unique, something you don't see all the time, a button front, a lower band, a bottom two inch band, finishing it off. And then it has some really detailed sleeves. So a set in sleeve uh, with a patch um, here with a vent opening with a placket, and then it's finished off with a cuff at the bottom of each sleeve. Um, the back itself is pretty simple. That bottom band just goes around all the way to the back and ends up at the front. So just a really great pattern that you could, you could make it without the pockets. You can make it with the sleeve patches. You can, you can really combine the different details to make it as simple and as complex as you want. So I think it's a great fitting jacket. 
Um, and I think that it's it's been really fun. We've made it in a lot of different fabrics. We've made it in the corduroy, which is what I have on here. We've made it in this wool. You can make it in linen. You can make it in different jacquards, which is what we have here on the back wall. You can wear it buttoned up like this, or you can wear it as an open front jacket. So I think it's, it's, it's really flattering. I think it has really great ease in it, which means you could wear it with a tank underneath, but you could also wear it with a long sleeve shirt underneath as well. So I think it has really good versatility for different seasons based on um, what type of fabric you use. So it's been a really fun project to, to work with and kind of take Kathy's initial design and run with it. So it's been a really fun design that we've been working with um, now for a couple of years. So. so let's talk a little bit about the origin of this because we do want to clarify that this is actually um, the, the pattern that we used in So Confident last year for the Now Jacket. So last year, Erin's corduroy version of this pattern that she's wearing was the kit and pattern we used for So Confident 2022 in January, the Now Jacket class. So we have basically, because of the popularity of that, that month, we have formed that project into a pattern. So that jacket is what is now called the day jacket. Right, and so um, maybe this is a great time for Linda to come back on because she could. we can see um, again what she's wearing. So Linda is wearing um, the Now shirt, which is how this started. So the Now shirt, um, wow, I'm trying to think of when that came out. Do you remember, Linda? No. So I was very young then, I know that. Me too. Yeah, we all, we all were younger. No, it's been a long time, but it's been one of those staples. The collar is a fold-over collar that's open on one end. It's very simple. I've lengthened this a couple of inches, so it is shorter in the pattern. Mm -hmm. And then a simple straight sleeve that I just roll up. So it could not be simpler, but it's the a great, as Nancy uses the word canvas, <laughs> for making a lot of changes. And it's I think it's why Kathy Davis loves this pattern so much, is she can do so much with it, not just in terms of pattern changes, but in terms of embellishments as well. Right, and so the um, original Now pattern um, came with the Now and Zen. So that was a printed pattern that we came out with however many years ago. Um, and then since then, you know, we've um, created digital patterns for both. And so, and then now the, the latest is the day jacket with all these amazing details. Um, and the other really great thing um, that we did develop with this pattern is it does come in a larger size range. And so we do have extra small to XXL, and then we have 1X to 5X. Um, so. Um, I think it's a it's a great way to um, have an updated look and um, a few more options as well for sizing. So the um, if we want to look at a few more details, I'm going to get this up close here so maybe you can see it a little bit better. Um, here's the the pocket that I was talking about, these patch pockets with the two different openings that go straight through. And then the sleeve. You did a great job. Uh, you did a great job matching the print on that, Erin. <laughs> it was. I wouldn't say this was a quick sew, um, but um, so it did take um, a lot of thinking, um, moving the pattern pieces around on the fabric, trying to get that floral lined up. Um, but the great thing about this print is, on certain aspects of it, you don't like. I matched the pockets, but I didn't match the center front here exactly because of just the way the floral um, lended itself to trying to maybe take the um, the colors of the floral, the greens that has a bunch, a lot of different green colors in it and taking those shapes and taking those florals and being able to lay those pattern pieces on there um, to where the design still made sense. Um, but I did want to make sure and match these front pockets. I thought that was really important. And, um, and I did try and match the sleeve patch on one side, but I have to admit on the other one, just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. And I thought, well, you know what? That's fine. That's, you know, I think in that, I think that that was just fine to, to leave it out on that side. So I think you can, I think you can play around with the floral design of this fabric a lot as you can with any other type of panel um, or print and to get the, to get the right match as much as you can, um, but allow yourself a little wiggle room to, to play and um, 
and not be as obsessive as I as I was initially in the process. So, but um, but it is a it's a great pattern. It's um right now I'm wearing it with a mix it tank and um, a Hudson pants. Um, so and you could wear it with a lot of different things. You could um, like I said, you could do a tank, but then you could do maybe a long sleeve tee underneath it. Um, I think you could do a full length pant, the Valencia, um, the Picassos. There's a lot of different um, patterns. I'd, I'd be, I'm trying to think of patterns that wouldn't look good with it. <laughs> so I think there would be, um, there wouldn't be very many. It's a very casual, or it can be a very casual to updated jacket and you can wear it with a lot of different things depending on, on what kind of fabric you choose. I love how you used this this fabric and how you chose it for your pattern. This is a fabric that's on sale this week. It is a wool lycra. It's called Seafoam Floral, which is a perfect name for it. It is um, wool and lycra. It's 59 inches wide, so we do have this on our, on our selection of fabrics for this week. Um, so you guys can definitely check it out. But um, one of my favorite elements in this pattern is the sleeve patch as well so i know it's hard to see on the mannequin it's hard to maybe see on aaron's coordinating corduroy but the sleeve patch is very cool and it's a really interesting detail and also something to consider to have a contrasting sleeve patch placement on the jacket you know in, a, in an alternate fabric oftentimes in ready to wear garments we're seeing a lot of leathers we're seeing a lot of um poplins or other treatments to sort of enhance a maybe a patch or a, a a focus point on a garment so right and you can see um you can see the patch a little bit better here on this sample you can see um see the detail of the the top stitching the top stitching the one thing i, I left out this pattern has really great top stitching details um, you can top stitch the patch you can top stitch the the pockets um, you can really have fun with the top stitching. You can do single a single row of top stitching. You can do um, two. So you have some a really great um, all these details you can really make stand out um, with the top stitching. Mm -hmm. And I, on my green jacket, I just did one row of top stitching. I thought with this fabric, um, I didn't think that the the double row of top stitching was really necessary. Um, but uh, with these solid corduroys, I think it makes a huge difference. So we are actually now going to watch a little clip of a video in the day jacket class, which is a class we launched for the launch of this pattern. So if you want to learn how to make the day jacket, you can purchase this video this week. It is on sale and you can learn step by step how to make this garment and the key techniques that you'll learn in this class that has to do with this pattern. So for those of you that were in so confident last year as a yearly or monthly member throughout the whole year, or maybe you just purchased January of last year, you do not need to purchase this because it is essentially the same video. Um, we've just cut it down to kind of omit the pattern uh, adjustments because since we made it into a pattern, we included all the pattern adjustments. So the day jacket, class is live and available and we are actually going to watch a little clip within this video to show you guys something i thought was very interesting it is linda actually talking about how to press the sleeve patch so she uses a pressing template which you're going to see and she is going to then fusey web around the edge of that pressing line uh, which is a curve and I found it, it's not something we talk about a lot, but I found it kind of fascinating to sort of see how she manipulated the pressing template, manipulated the fabric, and then put Fusey Web on this curve. So we're gonna watch her do that in the Day Jacket online workshop, which is on sale this week. Box at the end. And so you'll do that all along the The next step is to apply the patches to the sleeve. So I've already cut out my template. You know how to do that now. And this is a pressing template. And it is minus the actual seam allowances that are around the piece of the fabric. And the seam allowance on this particular piece is 3 eighths of an inch. That's a little bit different than normal. But when you are trying to press a curved seam around something, 
it's got to be smaller than a standard width. So let's do that. All right, I have my little finger thermal mitt on. You're going to see why in a minute. This is a little awkward, I have to say, but it is so helpful to do this. So I am actually pushing the fabric up and around the edge of this template. You can see why this little mitt right here is really important. Otherwise, I would really have some burnt hands. It would be really hard to get a really accurate pressing of a seam, a 3 8 inch seam, if you didn't have some sort of a template like this. It slipped a little bit on me. All right, here we go. I don't think I mentioned that this template is on the wrong side of the fabric. It seems a little obvious, but you know, you never know. It should be said. So let's see what that looks like. Looks like my edges are pretty smooth. I've got one little glitch right here. Let's correct that. Now's the time to do it. All right. Now let's just give this a little more of an independent press without that template. OK. And now, because we're going to apply this to the sleeve, we're going to apply some Fusy Web. So I'll start with those straight sides. And notice I'm straddling the edge of that turn back. That really keeps that in place, so I don't have to fight that anymore. And just in case I didn't actually cut this out perfectly, that template corrects everything. And so what's turning back might differ here and there, might be a little bit wavy, but that's all right. All right. Now, to do the curves, I'm just going to have to do it in little bits, little strips. Because this little paper covering does not want to move, does not want to bend. And notice I can just kind of tear that off at the very tip of the iron. Let me get this pressed. There we go. I'm getting so much steam on my glasses, I'm having a little trouble seeing. All right, we're almost there. OK. All of our fusy web is on. And now we get to take off the paper covering. And I think I better take that off, because I can't feel what I'm doing now. See how I'm struggling just a little bit? Getting that off. That's why I sometimes like to use tweezers, especially on these little curved pieces. Helps me get that not too much of a struggle. I love these tweezers, the little Japanese tweezers that have the point on the side rather than the end. They're just the best tweezers I've ever found.
the longer it stays on, the longer it wants to stay on. <laughs> All right, uh, last strip here. Okay. Now we're going to place that with the wrong side of the patch on the right side of the sleeve. And you notice I have a tailor's tack that indicates the top of that placket opening. And I have a matching one right here. So that is what I'm going to match. Sometimes it's just easier to fold this back and find, there we go, that's an easier way to do it. I should probably check it. I think that's perfect. And this lines up straight on this bottom edge. And now let's fuse that down. Sorry, I was muted. I'm so sorry. I've been doing that. Um, hello, I'm Alex. I'm I'm now not muted. So uh, I made some notes for the sleeve patch pressing notes. I'll repeat what I was saying to myself because no one could hear. Um, but um, regarding the sleeve patch, Linda used a manila file folder to make a template with tracing paper and a tracing wheel. So um, with the pattern piece that's in the pattern, you'll want to get a manila file folder. I mean, as you saw, using that manila file folder to make a template minus the seam allowances really helped Linda to manipulate and use that for pressing. So you have the pressing template that's minus the seam allowance. So in this case, it was 3 eighths of an inch. And then that template is placed on the wrong side of the fabric. And then for pressing, Linda is pressing and also pushing the fabric up and around the edge of the template and finger mitts or thermal thimbles which are on sale this week those are a must i don't know what it would have been like for her if she she didn't use those but probably like she said a lot of burnt fingers and um once she was finished with the pressing template she then pressed independently without the template to finish so as i said that's one of my favorite details of the um of the pattern and Erin, um, what do you have to say? Right, I was just going to show the um, the sleeve patch template that you were just talking about is here. Um, just something that you can just keep on hand, keep with the pattern, so you don't have to do it um, each time. It's just, it is a really great tool um, to have. And um, and then just another detailed shot of that of that sleeve patch. And one thing I found um, when I was making it, and I think when you're working with different fabrics, another tool that's really great is you might need um, um, some other pressing tools like a clapper or something to really nail down that shape. I had that, um, I thought that was really helpful on the wool or a um, pressing cloth, um, something that you're gonna, you might need. So, it, cause you do really need to, you know, as you're shaping that curve, you know, sometimes it takes a little extra work on certain fabrics that don't press as well. So you might need um, to place that pressing cloth on the top. So just a few other things, depending on what you're working with. And I know we mentioned top stitching is one of our favorite elements on this pattern. I know, Erin, you have some samples of the top stitching, maybe just to see a little bit closer. But the top stitching was a really cool feature that we did last year for our January So Confident project. And of course, in the contrasting thread, you can see it really well. And even, you know, that's something to consider in making the pattern this time around. Maybe you want to kind of enhance the look of the top stitching by using a contrasting thread. So we used both a um, quarter inch foot and an edge stitching foot. That technique is talked about in the day jacket class that's in the video. So having both of those feet and moving the needle position over kind of according to where you need a top stitch was made this really effective. All right. And you can see those details here. And like I said, you can do um, you can um, do one or two rows of top stitching, depending on what kind of fabric you're working with and what you want to stand out 
um, but you can really see those details in that contrasting thread here on this example of the front patch pocket. And you can do that, it not only is it on the pockets, but it's also on the front bands, um, the, the collar, the bottom band, um, the sleeve cuff, and then of course the sleeve patch. So there's a lot of um, places where you can really see that detail when the, the lines of the garment can really stand out when you use that top stitching detail. And you can also do it on the um, shoulder seams. Erin, can you talk about how the sleeve is inserted on this pattern? Um, yes, the sleeve itself is, um, it is, uh, the sleeve doesn't have, um, you would think that a sleeve like this, it's a little roomier, um, you would, it would be a flat sleeve. Um, but this one is set in because of the detail on the patch and on the placket and the, and the cuff. So you do set it in, in the round. Um, but it is a sleeve that doesn't have a lot of shaping up at the sleeve cap. And just a couple other questions about the pattern before we get to the fabric. Um, let's see those front patch pockets again. They are both useful and decorative, I think. They, they have a little bit of uh, space at the bottom to perhaps store something, but, you know, I think that to opening pocket is, is really more so for a decorative effect, but yes, could be useful as well. Right, I see it as a design detail, but you could put maybe some keys in there if you wanted to. <laughs> maybe one um, or two keys. What about the shoulders? Uh, where is it hitting you on the shoulders? Would you consider this to be an extended shoulder? It has a slight extension. It's um, a one inch extension off of the shoulder. Um, it's may appear a little bit more on the shoulder on me um, because of my broader shoulders, um, but it does have about a one inch um, extension off the shoulder. All right. Um, and again, to review, the presser feet that we used for the top stitching was a quarter inch foot and an edge stitching foot. And yes, as well as the pockets, any, any top st stitching effect, if you choose to do this top stitching in that form, like Erin said, you can do, you can choose not to do the top stitching or just have one row. But if you want to have that double layer of top stitching, you can use both quarter inch foot and edge stitching foot. Correct. Yeah. Any other questions that we have? I don't think so. I know um, there's a there's a question for Nancy, so maybe Nancy will will come back to you at the very end. But um, let's move on to fabric. Okay. So we have an assortment of different fabrics here on the wall. Um, we have um, some like the wool, like I made the sample out of some wool, some wool lycras. We have some jacquards. Um, we have a few quilty or quilt, they look like quilted fabrics, um, but they are a print that I think would just be really perfect for a jacket. Um, there's a range of medium weight fabrics to some lighter weight fabrics. And I think you can use um, a variety of different weights for this jacket. Um, so like for instance, this is a lighter weight fabric here on top a jacquard. And, um, but I still think that this weight would be really nice. You see that drape with that jacquard and this is um a blend it's a it's a jacquard blend <laughs> and you can see that um you could use you could use either side of this fabric i think depending on the blue is a little bit more prominent on this side of the fabric and i think that the kind of the taupe and the brown is a little bit more prominent on this side but you could use either side and then this is a beautiful ongaro fabric that we um, we love this fabric around here. We think it's just, it has a beautiful colorway of a, with a peach background, some violet flowers, um, kind of gray and off-white flowers mixed in there. Um, and this is a viscose and wool coating. And this would make a stunning jacket. I think it would be a similar weight to the green um, that I made. And we also have another garment made up in it a Verona coat that Deb made. Isn't that stunning? Mm -hmm. I think the Verona pattern was a really good choice as well. 
for her to use for this fabric. And she did line it. She lined this coat. So, but a beautiful, great weight for a coat or a jacket. And then these are the quilt-like fabrics that I think will be great. They are a print though. They look like a, a quilted fabric, but it's a print. And um, it is a viscose in cotton. They are panels. We have two different ones actually, the green and pink here. And then we have a pink and purple combination, both with black backgrounds. Um, this one, I'm gonna get this out so you can really see the panel itself but it has a smaller print towards the bottom. And then you can see that that same uh, print is scaled up towards the top. But it has the repeat, what did we say the repeat was on this? It's a 27 inch panel. And so I think if you were to get um, at least three panels of this, that would be three to four, depending on what size you're making. Um, that would be enough for the new day jacket. But you can see how the scale changes from each panel. I'll get a little closer. So I just think these are gorgeous. The weight of this is fantastic. The colors, I love the combination of the colors. It's a little bit unexpected. I think these would just make beautiful, beautiful coats. And then of course the fabric at the bottom is the green wool. Um, it's a wool and lycra blend. It's, it's so soft, very drapey, slightly spongy, which I think makes it really comfortable to wear. It's just, I just love how soft and drapey this fabric is. And um, I think we were talking earlier about, you know, matching the prints, you know, making sure the florals are lining up or trying to the best you can. And I think if you've got maybe a half a yard to a yard more, you'd really have a lot of room to play and make sure you get um, all your florals matched up with all your different pieces. Um, but it's such a beautiful fabric. I thought it turned out really, really nice. And then on this side, um, this is a similar um, wool and weight to some of these other ones here. It is another Angaro. Just a beautiful creamy background with purple flowers. Just has a nice um, would you say it's a watercolor look to it, Linda? <laughs> um, but I think this would make a fantastic jacket. Um, this one is a 72% wool, 20% viscose, and 7% polyester. Um, but just this would be perfect for the jacket. And here's that quilt-like um, fabric. I believe these are cotton. Viscose and cotton, that's right viscose and cotton, and the other purple and pink colorway. And then these down below here, these are just stunning jacquards with um, kind of a mulberry um, pink color and a burnt orange and gray and black. And it has a stripe to it. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of a bigger roll, but I'm gonna pull it out because I just think that the colors are beautiful. And then you could really see the weight the drape this has a really beautiful hand to it mm -hmm. i think this will make that looks like jacket. that looks like your uh color erin i love that mulberry kind of cranberry color mm -hmm. i think that's that's beautiful it's like a combination of me and linda in there you got the burnt orange and the <laughs> the, uh, the pink i think that's beautiful and then this bottom one is another jacquard in a beautiful swirl design. Um, it has orange and let's see, rust and orange is a wool blend. Um, so it, not only does it have this swirl stitching design, but it also has a, a plaid design through it. Um, you can really see that come across on the screen, um, but it has um, green and it looks like blue and orange plaid and then it has the swirl stitching on top i think that that would be a beautiful jacket i love that one there's been some comments to how maybe some of these fabrics go together or they're also fabrics to consider for decorative sleeve patches 
So. Oh, I think so. Especially, I think these bottom two that were together, these two look really nice together. Put yeah. these two together. I was I would actually do, do the first two. The um, the, these two. Yeah, I didn't. Maybe on I this. think I was surprised at how well a lot of these went together. They all seemed so different, but the colors. I thought the color groupings were actually really nice when you put them all together. Um, I think it's pretty amazing. That seems to happen for us. We just, I think it's just, we have a great selection, right? <laughs> and so we can, you know, it's, it's interesting to see how different fabrics go together. And um, I think if you think outside the box, you can really just pull different fabrics together um, and see the similarities between the colors. And so I think you could put a lot of these together. We do have other fabrics on sale besides what you're seeing on the wall. So, um, the wool lycra sea foam is in here. We have some feather whale corduroys in a few different colors available. Um, this one, jacquard pink and gray opt op art, is one that's on sale. Uh, and just so, so you guys know, you can click on these fabrics and see some bigger pictures, kind of see the scale of different things. But also this week we did add to these fabrics. Since the day jacket takes nine buttons, uh, if you choose to have a button closure, of course, but it, since the pattern does take nine buttons, you can see here under the uh, options, you can add thread, of course, to your order, but you could also add nine buttons. So we will, as a team, pick nine buttons for you. If you have requests or whatever, you're always welcome to call us, but you can add nine buttons to your order in order to make the day jacket. So that is something to consider. So you should see that with these fabrics that are here this week for you for the sale. So definitely take a look at all the options that we have for our sale fabrics this week. And right. And, and Deb and Becky, um, they love picking out buttons and they're very good at it. Um, so they, they will pick out some fantastic buttons if you add that onto your order. So um, complete faith in their <laughs> ability to pick out some great buttons. So they like, they like doing that. Um, I did want to show the different um, corduroy, the other weight um, corduroy that we have. For them. We not only have yardage, but we do have some kits available. Um, so we do have a beautiful evergreen. I'm not, is that, I'm not sure if that's what we call it, but. Tartan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, a, just a beautiful classic black, of course. And then um, all the samples that you've seen in the blue, this royal blue, we have that kit as well. And then I believe we have just a few cuts of um, this raspberry as well. I'm not sure if it's kits, but I'm pretty sure it's just a few cuts that we have available. Um, so we do have those options as well. And those will already come with, since they're kits, they already come with the nine buttons and the thread that you need. All right, so is Linda there? She is. <laughs> Can Linda, you show us the fabric for your now shirt? Sure. Yeah, this is from the Balt. So this is a silk charmeuse. Uh, so you can make the now or the day mm -hmm. <laughs> jacket in a blouse weight. Um, but this is long gone because I made this many years ago. But it's still as good today as ever, I think. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yep. Can we see the uh, sea foam green maybe sample up close? Oh, yes. You can critique my matching. <laughs> well, there's great comments, Erin. You did a great job with your matching. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Just have to settle in and know it's going to be a challenge and Go for it. Um, would you line any of these, Erin or Linda? I think you could line these. Um, <clears throat> Bemberg rayon, China silk would be great linings for any of the fabrics. If you need to, you know, lining, the purpose of lining is to disguise the interior uh, construction elements, the seams and all of that. So it cleans up the inside, makes it easier to put on, adds a little bit of weight and warmth, a little bit. Sure, mm -hmm. you could underline or line any of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, Linda, what fabric would you choose? Ooh. <laughs> you know, I have been looking at these. Um, I think the one word that maybe you didn't use was file. There's a file texture to these. So it's a linear, small raised uh, uh, texture to this. And I've been looking at the green one for a long time. Not a long time. We haven't had it that long. But um, I, depending on the sales of it this week, <laughs> this is probably going to be a jacket. I just can really imagine wearing this with black or I love the blush pink with mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So we have some blush pink linen. I think maybe it's going to be a pair of Picasso pants for the summer. And this might be my summer <laughs> throw on jacket. I do love those pink pants. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Nancy, you are still here. I see you. Um, we would like to ask a couple more questions that came in from the chat. So um, your Tremont vest, did you use flannel as a mid layer? I did. You did. Okay. Yeah. I pieced directly on the flannel. And there was another one. Let me see if I can find it. Um, oh, your plaza jacket. Oh, ah. well, someone's asking if you can show your plaza jacket today, but I don't think you, it's like really in the vault, is it? It No, it's here. I've got it. Oh, Do you want okay. it? Okay. Is it accessible? It is. It's behind me. This is it. Oh, cool. And this is the back. And one more question. Do you do a lot of dyeing with the kimono fabrics? Yes. I over dye um, the vintage kimono sometimes. Just put it in a, a dye bath and let it sit and see what happens. And that's what happened with the plaza jacket. It got a little muddy. Uh, in color because it had been, by the time I had it, it had been dyed several times. So um, that's why I decided to just go for it and put that really acid piece of, um, of um, fabric with it. The shibori, the cotton shibori, which was always on the wall and he never knew what to do, but I thought it really brought this back up color-wise. So you do dye the shibori? I didn't dye the shibori. I dyed the kimono fabric. Okay. The silk. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks for staying. You're welcome. Uh, one more fabric question. Um, the blue side of the first fabric. I think, I wonder if that goes with the one below it, the reverse side. I think it does. Yeah. Yeah. Do you? I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like a shirt weight chalet. I love this. And then this has a uh, um, kind of an embossed texture mm -hmm. to the background, which I'm sure you don't see on the, yeah, on I wonder, the wall. See, even you do me. it. Excuse me. <laughs> Again. Ah! Oh, just a song here, but. I'm not sure how well that shows up, but it is really, there it is, you can see it. So it adds a geometric element to this design, which is really interesting, especially when the, the background is, you know, the, the floral aspect is scattered throughout. And so it adds a nice detail. And there's not much of that one left. So I think if you want that piece, we have a, we have music going on yeah. here with our, um, mm -hmm. but if you want that piece, I, there's probably just one to two, um, you know, enough yardage for one or two jackets. So I would definitely get on that one. Can you show the drape of the floral seafoam? Sure. <laughs> sure. I think for the weight of this, the drape, it's just beautiful. Maybe we can get a little closer. All right. 
Well, let's go through the sale one more time and talk about what is on sale this week for everyone. Okay, so we do have, um, we have a lot of fabrics on sale this week, um, things that are perfect for this new day jacket. And there is a variety of different discounts on them. Um, so, and you'll see that noted on the website, um, but we do have, um, see 30% off the Jacquards and the Corduroy, 50% um, off the Ongaro fabrics, 60% um, off of the printed, these we're calling the quilted fabrics here. Those are 60% off and those are some of our favorites. Um, and then of course the, the pattern is on sale, 15% off for its debut, thermal thimbles um, and kits. I believe the kits are on sale as well. <laughs> there's the thermal thimbles. <laughs> there's, um, I think there's three in the package, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so there are a variety of different sizes within one package. Did I get all the sale items, yeah. Alex? The class? Yeah. yeah, you did. Oh, and the, yes, the class um, for the yes. day jacket is also um, premiering today. So that's premiering. a great pairing with the first is a good word, pattern. yes. Okay, any other questions? I don't think so. Happy shopping, everyone. Yeah. Have fun, week. <laughs> have fun making your new day, day jackets. And don't forget to add buttons to your fabric order if you want to make the pattern. And um, send pictures, and we'll see you guys next week. All right. All right thank, thank you.